That's the MSP, John Lamont. Time now is 7.23. It's time to take a look at the papers and joining us to talk about the stories that's caught his, that have caught his eye is economist Robert Meakin. Welcome. Thank Good you. morning. Hi. Let's dig, go, uh, dive straight in. Um, Europe, obviously, in the wake of the European election, so many um, main parties have had quite, quite a bloody nose. But mm -hmm. the future of Europe is being spoken yeah. about. And um, David Cameron, very much against the idea of a United States of Europe. Yes, he's playing hardball. I think inevitably after what happened under the rise of UKIP, obviously, in recent days, yes, the uh, Federalist uh, Jean-Claude Jean Juncker, who's the favourite to be the next head of the EU Commission, Cameron is apparently saying behind closed doors to Angela Merkel, we're not going to go for that. If he does get the job, I suspect Britain will leave the EU. And I think it's a useful story to be put out at this time as well for Cameron, because he needs to be seen to be tougher, taking a tougher stance, I suspect, against the EU presently, and obviously his own party putting him under that sort of pressure as well. Mm, and that's a, a direct response to UKIP. We heard, didn't mm. we, in the week when, when he went to that, that dinner of the European heads of state, that that was kind of his main thing, that he, Mr Juncker was very much yeah. in his crosshairs. Yeah, he hasn't got... I mean, Cameron has to take that line, I think. I don't, it's not the time at the minute to be a moderate, you know, pro-European if you're the leader of the Tory party. Mm. He's under such pressure, and obviously Farage rising the way he is. Cameron has to be seen to be taking this sort of stance. Something a bit different. Um, Lewis Hamilton mm. um, says... Well, tell us what it says. Uh, F1 <laughs> Lewis, town is far from the pit. Yeah, it's, it's the hazards of famous people talking about their humble backgrounds. He's, he's from Stevenage and is insisting it was, quote, uh, not a great place to grow up. He's actually trying to make the comparison with his rival, Nico Rosberg, who grew up in Monaco and had a more privileged life. He's trying to make the point that he comes from an edgier, hungrier background. But, of course, inevitably... Uh, Stevenage has taken exception to this. And surprise, surprise. Surprise. And I remember a couple of years ago, Ringo Starr being asked about Liverpool. What did he miss about Liverpool? He wisely made the joke, not much. Mm. And again, you know, I'm afraid you, you've got to be very, very careful with, with these sorts of things when it comes to your, where you're from. People can take offence very easily. Maybe Lewis has enjoyed the F1 lifestyle a bit too much in Monaco yeah, now. He's, 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 he's struggling by now, isn't he, by the looks of it? Yeah. Shall we stick to the sporting theme? I know okay. there, are, there are some politics you want oh, to talk yeah, about, yeah. but let's stick to the sporting theme because because um, David Moyes, um, I'm not sure it was an in, uh, a popular decision for everyone that he was booted out, I, I think. think. Real mixed feelings, yeah. to be honest. I mean, the, there was a romantic notion, you know, Manchester United arguably, you know, well, clearly one of the biggest clubs in the world, and they, ha they put great stock in we're building for the long term because Sir Alex Ferguson was there for so long before, and we're going to be patient, we're not expecting immediate results overnight, blah, blah. And he was gone within the year. Yeah. Moyes himself is now saying he, you know, obviously suggesting that he doesn't think he was given enough time, that mm. it's the end of an era for sort of long-term planning, probably for the club, and is also obviously putting that's himself out key, there. That's isn't it, the yeah. end of long-term planning, because that's, mm. that's a little bit of a dig at those who oh, yeah. didn't keep him there. Understandable as well. I yeah. mean, I think a lot, a lot needs to be done internally with the club, and he, you know, because the results didn't come immediately, I think he, he rightly feels that he was you know, let go too soon. Um, he's obviously also putting himself in the shop window again, mm -hmm. saying, I've already had a, some interesting offers, which managers always tend to do. It's interesting. It sh shows how time has moved on as well, though, that that's just one little strap across the bottom mm -hmm. of a page at the, in the Times. At, at one point, a few weeks ago, it might have been a full page. Oh, but... my goodness, what yeah. a year for yeah. Moyes. Yeah. You know, what a year. Back to politics. Mm. Um, Nick Clegg seems to have weathered a rather awkward week. Um, but Just. Just. Yeah. But it seems that, according to this report in The Independent on Sunday... MPs' fury over poor election results rages on. There's panic within the Lib Dem ranks, inevitably. They've just taken an absolute battering in the last few days. This is his first meeting he's going to have with his parliamentary, with his MPs, I think, on Wednesday. And it's all behind closed doors, so it'll be a fairly frank discussion, it's fair to say. And there's, as I say, there's widespread panic within the party because MPs now realise there's a real chance of a lot of them losing their seats. Yeah, losing their jobs. Yeah, absolutely. So he's got... He's got. Major say, he's weathered the storm this last week, the sort of pillars the Lib Dem establishment, the likes of Paddy Ashton, have come out and supported him. But you still... It's a, it's a torrid time ahead for him, and it's very difficult as an observer to see it ending well for him. Mm. Let's have a quick word. Um, this looks like a bit of fun. Um, half term this week for many. Um, many yeah. may have taken um, trips away, trips aboard. Some stressful <laughs> times at the airport, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah, it is interesting. This is research from the mathematics academic Jordan Ellenberg, who is suggesting... I mean, I'm, I'm one of those people who gets to the airport sort of two or three hours early. I'm always paranoid about missing a plane. Yeah. Uh, 
Professor Ellenberg says I'm completely wasting my time because he says that over a course of a lifetime you will spend countless negative units of time sitting in airport lounges, walking aimlessly around duty-free shops and eating overpriced food. He's got a point. He has got a point. Yeah. So well, the, unless you take it with you. So yeah, he's true, saying that organised. So he's saying then that you should actually just calculate exactly how yeah. to get there. And stop wasting all your How time. How does that work? How can you calculate yeah, the, the right mm. time and just you know, uh, and, and get there at the last minute? It, it wouldn't suit me at all. I think the stress would be too much. I'm, I'm a bit of a last minute person, I, I must say. Lastminute.com. Indeed. <laughs> Robert, thank you <laughs> thank very you. much. We'll see you in about an hour or so. Thank you. Thank you. We're with you on BBC One until nine o'clock this morning. That's when Andrew Marr takes over. Let's find out what's on the programme. Good morning, Andrew.